निरतम करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ श्री चिन्मय सद्गुरव नम योगे न पदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक प्रवर मुनीना पातंजलि प्राजलीना तो इन योग शास्त्र द मेथडोलॉजी एडॉप्टेड बाय ए कॉमन मैन लाइक अस व्हेन वी इंटरैक्ट विथ एनी ऑब्जेक्ट इन द वर्ल्ड द सेम इंटरैक्शन undergoes a transformation when we see it when we talk about transformation in seeing we need to understand what is the difference between a yogi and a common man both are in the world interact with the world but the interaction is different the difference lies in the fact that when we see an object let us take an example of a cat we all have seen cat when i say cat or when we think about a word called cat what comes to our mind the first thing that comes to our mind is only a word called cat when i am trying to explain please think along the lines when we say cat the first thing that is noted by us if you close your eyes and now we are trying to focus and think on a word called cat when we think the first thing comes to notice is a word called cat now this is just a plain word nothing associated with it i know your mind is now racing to associate some meaning with it think when i say cat immediately in front of your eyes now the word is immediately put behind and what comes to your mind is your favorite cat it's white in color black in color mixed in color looks like this 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 is the second thing that comes to your mind now just keep focusing on that word 
now what comes to your mind is oh i had such a beautiful pet cat and you know what it is to run all around the house now you have moved beyond the word the shape towards the functionality if somebody is not having a pet cat in his home he will think about a cat chasing a mouse it's predator instinct maybe somebody might just think of tom and jerry as cat possible what has happened we have recalled a cat from our memory or maybe we have seen a cat in front of us but actually in the mind what happened i pronounced a word called cat i collaborated corroborated with my memory the shape called cat and when you say cat you don't remember dog you remember cat precisely that shape and then you remember the functionality which you have learnt or seen which is stored in your memory the same thing happens when a yogi also looks towards a cat he also notices the cat what happened here was when the word cat was pronounced and perceived only as the word first thing that comes is word it is called shabd when i see a shape physiognomy or anatomy the shape size of the cat it is called arth and then my mind gives me clue about its gnana what is the gnana oh i was having a cat it is my pet cat her name of my cat was rani whatever it is so three things name information about the shape and third functionality when these three things are normally rolled together <coughs> in our perception <coughs> so we are not able to separate them do we separate them every time no we just say i just remembered a cat this remember this happened in a in a in a in a span of split second or few second how much time you remembered cat depends upon how much time your mind is dwelling on cat now what happens in a flash of time in a split second you remember shabd gnan arth the word the physicality and the functionality all at once they are three separate but you feel at once because of the speed with which we get these three two things together now ask a question to yourself what you understood of the word or of the object called cat is your own perception of word cat does cat have any relevance with the word cat if it is asked to the cat that what about cat word what do you feel he would say i don't know why it is my word ascribed associated with the object the object has nothing to do with it the shape the physicality yes in this three dimensional world the shape is there which the object may be aware or may not be aware if you are a human being you are aware of your shape i am fat i am lean we are aware the cat may not be aware but yes the shape is there the physicality is there and the third thing functionality 
oh it was our pet cat the object has no knowledge so what has happened is the functionality of the object is nothing else but my own impression about the object not the object the name is given by me by some convention in hindi the same cat is called billy now let us say we are interacting with an american and we say i saw a billy the word doesn't elicit any response in him because the word is not known to him not known to him means it is ascribed to the observer not to the object what it means is every object that we interact in the world we impose our observations on the object and say object is like this the object is not like that <clears throat> one of the commonest example is when we are young we fall in love it is infatuation we like some girl or the girl likes some boy this another boy or another girl says oh he is not good looking she is not good look i don't know what you saw in her what you saw in her because these are individual interpretation about the object and liking and disliking liking disliking is a reaction or response but as far as object is concern the functionality of the object is imposed by my mind on the object the object is not like that so that means every object has word shabda physicality artha and functionality gnana that gnana and shabda these two are definitely creation of my own mind it has nothing to do with the object what difference does it make to the cat if you tell him that you you are a cat he'll say okay people call me by my name dr jadav and i say yes did you call me i say that i respond to that but am i dr jadav it's a name agreed upon by everyone for this object this typical object what is my functionality maybe a balding man a small man a short whatever it is that is because that again would vary from each observer and what is physicality in me 167 inches is physicality two hands two legs physicality of these three the shabda is spurious the gnana is spurious only the arth that to the outer aspect is true to certain extent now the only difference when a yogi looks at an object and a common man looks at an object is a common man glances through various objects during interactions with the world for a split second his thought is on the car then on the home then on the wife then on the food then on the animal then on the child then on the book then on the bhagavad gita then on this then on that flitting a constantly jumping mind from one object to the another object barely residing for fractional time on an object we read bhagavad gita we do not read it for a very long time why the mind flits while reading the shloka is read suddenly the mind goes away again it is brought back second line is read again it goes back again it is brought back next word so word to word also it doesn't stay in that word so shabda arth gnan one object 
shabda arthajnan another shabda arthajnan another so this is nothing else but the three things about the object jumping from one place to another that is all that can be described about our life entire life we are doing this either the object in front of me or the object recalled from the memory all i need is an object to interact with even the experience that is recalled it has again incidences incidences has objects so ultimately it comes to that object which means in our life we are never never steady and poised on an object to observe it properly that being the reason if i look at an object like handkerchief i just call it it is an handkerchief that's all i'm done i'm not interested in exactly knowing what the handkerchief is why it suffices for me in this world to call this as a handkerchief because the other person is doing the same mistake of just looking at the external things and say call it as a handkerchief done functionality to wipe the face shape squareish name handkerchief enough enough for interaction why compare this with an analogy of three children that have come together and they are discussing about the atom now none of them know what the atom is so what will they say they will compare atom with something that they know and that will suffice them similarly we all in this world are mutually agreeable association where this much is enough for us to transact in this world shabda artha gyan and then we create impressions on this shabda artha gnana as good bad or favorable unfavorable so there is a currency note which is basically a paper but moment a4 size plain paper comes we are not much interested when a small size currency note comes what happens the functionality changes so shabda artha same paper square shin feels like this that all is same gnanam functionality changes so i ascribe some functionality and the whole concept changes <clears throat> then comes the main question is this the real nature of an object that i see that's precisely where the ordinary man stops thinking and the yogi starts thinking the yogi's domain starts the first difference the yogi has is he does not flit from object to object he stay put in the object when you stay put in an object now you are going to see the shabda the gnana and the artha the name the physicality and the functionality as separate to see it as separate you have to stay put on one object for a prolonged time ordinary man calls this as meditation in meditation what we do is we stay put at any object and mind well every object irrespective of which object you have in front of you has these three things called shabda arth gnana the word 
the physicality, the functionality. Now, put your mind for some thinking and imagine you are meditating on Sri Rama Murti. You have, every one of us will be having some Murti or even the photograph of Gurudev. Close your eyes and try to bring it in front of you. And when you meditate on that, initially, it is precisely the way the mind is accustomed to the normal transactory world. So we will have the name called Rama, the physicality called a small four, five, six inches murti of metal or whatever in front of you have or a photograph. Functionality, oh, he's a Ram who was a Sitapati. You might remember the incidents of his coronation. You might in, in, remember the Valmiki Ramayana, maybe Bhanuman also you might remember with him. You might remember his Lanka Yuddha. Functionality. Up to that point, you are in the common man's world. Now, if you are able to Pull in your mind and keep it on the murti of Sri Rama. Then we realize that the word Rama, Rama, Rama is continuing without my notice. You do not notice that you are doing the japa or Sri Rama, Jai Rama, Jai Jai Rama. It continues mechanically. But the mind is now focusing on Bhagavan Sri Ram's idol. If you focus more on him, what happens is the functionality that Bhagavan Sri Rama took part in Lanka Yuddha, Bhagavan Sri Ram was Kaushalya's son, Dasharath Maharaj was feeling the pain of leaving Bhagavan Sri Ram in Vanvasa. All those things lag behind. What remains is only the physical shape of Bhagwan Sri Rama, either in the form of the idol that you have in front of you, or the idol slowly vanishes and the mind starts perceiving a tall image of as if life. Live Shri Rama, which is tall, beautiful, having a particular complexion on the skin, maybe radiating. So now what is happening is the physicality is coming to the prominence. What is lagging behind? The world is lagging behind. The functionality is lagging behind. And mind well, the mind is focused, not going here and there. It will keep sleeping because there's suddenly a sound in the kitchen. The mind went there, again brought back. If you are able to keep the mind only on this idol, then what is clear to us is initially, I remember that I am, I am saying Sri Ram, Sri Ram, so I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the word. Then the mind will go to the functionality, how great Sri Ram was. He was fighting like a ferocious warrior, functionality. And then it will also go towards the shape of Ram Murti or Bhagavan Sri Ram into the mental image. Mind well, these three components are Shabda Arthadnyanam. As we pursue, the Shabda is clearly lagging behind, the functionality is lagging behind, the focus goes on. The physical form, focusing on the form. When the mind stays for a sufficient time and is able to distinguish very clearly the three aspect of an object. 
these three aspects are the options options are called vikalpa so when vikalpas are there but clearly defined of only one object mind well the condition is only one object sir you are not supposed to deviate from one object when you focus on only one object these three options called vikalpa are very clear to the mind the mind may vary from the shabda because suddenly you will realize i am doing a japa so you your mind will come back to the word ram 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 so you are bringing back your mind to the word then you are looking at the physicality of ram the word may lag behind and both may lag behind if you are thinking of the functionality but as we press forward if the mind sufficiently stays on one object clearly distinguishing these three aspects then it is called a mind that is hovering on three aspects of one object not many objects when the mind is on one object but on the three aspects or three options or three vikalpas it is called savitark samprajnat samadhi sa vitarka with options samprajnat mind well in ordinary world when you look at an object and when the mind moves from one object to the other object because it keeps flitting it is and still you come to know the object that antakarna is called buddhi now the same buddhi is transformed because now it has ability to focus on only one object for some time there are two aspect one is the time for which you focus or concentrate on one object and second is depth of concentration depth to which you penetrate when you don't concentrate and when you don't stay on one object for a very long time and keep flitting you are in the ordinary world if you are listening to what i'm speaking with a considerable intent or the concentration you shall understand precisely what i have in my mind while expressing the thought because your mind is focusing on what i'm speaking the complete focus then takes the word inside hovers on the meaning of the word associates it with its functionality but the words are coming in your ears and getting dissolved because you are not focusing on the word anymore you are focusing on the meaning of the word what is happening is when the yogi decides to focus upon on an object it is automatically expected that he is not focusing on any other object in the world not focusing on any other object is vairagya the world is shut off that is why no meditation can start unless you shut off the outside world and the simple meaning of shutting off the outside world is to stop the mind from going from object to object thought to thought take one thought one thought at a time with full concentration gives happiness that is the reason we keep thinking about those incidences which gave you a happiness you ruminate on that thought and again feel happy sir the incidents happened long back the intimate relationship between a man and a woman gives happiness it is not the happiness of two bodies coming together it is the happiness of concentration 
but because the heightened concentration gives a long lasting and an alarming level of happiness, we crave for it. And when we remember that happiness, even though we are not, even those two bodies are not together, they remember the occasion and again feel happy. How is it that something that has already happened is making me happy again? Think. All the things in Vivahara are immaterial for us because we are student of Patanjali Yoga Shastra. So from Maithuna to the Milana, we look at it from the scientific angle of the Patanjali's eyes. So all the anandam that we expressed or we experienced during the heightened level of two bodies coming together, even at the remembrance in future, gives us the happiness because through my mind goes back to the experience as an object and dwells into it, into the earth with concentration. So the thought remains in the mind, the concentration increases and you, as if you experience that incidence again. You think about a, 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 a favorite dish that you have eaten, which you like, and not only that you enjoy it, even the what mouth starts watering in the absence of that object. Actually, you are remembering the thought of what you ate. You're not eating now, but it still gives you the kind of pleasure that you experienced when you ate it because concentration. Now this is what we do by recalling the objects or by consuming the objects because we want to constantly bask in the happiness. So we keep on testing and changing the subjects and the objects and the experiences and the thoughts because we want to extract the happiness from it. We know that we are extracting happiness. Actually what we are doing is we are trying to concentrate so that we can get that happiness. Because the happiness lies in the concentration, not in the fleeting. When the Shabda, Jnana, Artha are clearly defined, the mind is on one object. Then when we see the Rama Murti, we know that the word Rama, the functionality Rama, and the physicality of Rama, these three are different. That is the first awareness that comes across the yogi when he concentrates the mind on a gross object for a considerable period of time. This revelation of tripartite aspect of an object is a thing that happens after some time when you concentrate. When the mind has stopped going to other objects, when it is completely shut off from the world and we are focusing on an object, then these three aspects become clear to us. This is called Savitarka. Sampradnyat. Why Sampradnyat? Now the buddhi which is used for this is not the ordinary buddhi of the day-to-day -day transaction. The buddhi transform itself into a powerful weapon. In fact, it is a powerful weapon. We have never used it. Now that I start using it, the buddhi shines. The penetration power of buddhi increases. The potentiality of buddhi increases. Such a buddhi is called pradnya. Because this pradnya goes and penetrates into an object as if in order to clearly distinguish three aspects of any object, Shabda Artha Jnana, it is called Sa Vitarka. That means with options or with vikalpa of Shabda Jnana Artha, Sam Pradnya, with the pradnya, the buddhi that which is transformed into a penetrating power. Samadhi, Samadha. What has happened is, a equal 
application of buddhi at one point sarvada sthapanam buddhe shuddhe brahmani sarvada tat samadana ityukte natu chittasya lalanam this is the definition of samadhan in viveka chodamani application of mind at one point the one point completely filling the mind and not letting the antakkarana or the mind waver with anything else is called samadhana samadhi if at all the yogi is having the power of the buddhi he can further go on concentrating now the number of hours of the time that is dedicated for concentration is increased by the yogi if you keep on focusing on the murti the thoughts will prevail in the mind the thoughts have been prevented from prevailing in the mind the only the thought of ram is on mind the ram word is being uttered by the mind ajapa japa we are uttering the word ram in the mind looking at the rama in front of us through our mind's eye because the eyes are closed and the mind is hovering between the rama the word rama the physicality rama the functionality <clears throat> further he focuses with great effort further when he focuses the buddhi which is pragna now moves further the further advance of buddhi then focuses on the physicality the form of rama the word now is lagging behind the functionality is lagging behind so shabda and gnana what is this gnana which is lagging behind the gnana is nothing else but smriti ram fought in lanka hanuman was his aid he was husband of sita all these are nothing else but something that we have stored in our memory that memory from that memory those functionalities are slowly wiped out now only thing what remains is the shape or physicality or the ram aspect now the mind starts further penetrating and suddenly realizes that the gross object called ram that in front of me that i was having has disappeared the shabd has gone back completely into oblivion dissolved gnanam is dissolved now i only see the physical form of bhagwan shri ram now my mind is focusing on only one aspect not on the three aspect and the only aspect is arth aspect this is called nirvitarka without option single pointed samadhi savitar nirvitarka sampradnyat samadhi <clears throat> again yogi practices further wants to have further development vikas of the buddhi the pragna is becoming be getting further refined he has decided to sit in the meditation with a complete concentration and push the border when he pushes the border the word ram has disappeared the functionality of ram or the aspects associated in my memory about the bhagwan ram is disappeared even the physical shape called bhagwan ram has disappeared what is happening is i have penetrated beyond that and all grossness of the object is gone now i see only the subtle energy form 
all i see is subtler form <clears throat> very difficult to describe but definitely there is no shape there is no objectification of rama instead the mind is focusing on subtlety subtle energy something that appears to be higher something that appears to be full of light prakashamaya what has happened is my mind has now penetrated into sukshma from the stool i have penetrated into sukshma now the same murti is seen in a completely different aspect and that aspect is called bhuta sukshma bhuta sukshma is energy form it is a subtler form of energy there is light associated with it there may be divya anubhava associated with it and now what i see is all i am aware is of a subtler aspect of whatever i was thinking i do not remember the name what i was thinking i do not remember the shape i was thinking i do not remember the functionality or memory whatever i had about that object my memory is almost wiped out i am just looking what i am looking is something which i have not experienced so this is not anubhava janya jnana this is an experience of a different type it was something it is something which i have not seen earlier it seems to be only in energy form a huge confluence of light and energy as if they are mixing with each other having the brighter aspect that is all that is left in front of me in front of my mental eye i have only subtler energy forms i don't know what to call them i don't know what to give the name to it in fact all i know is i am still having awareness that i am seeing this energy form so the only awareness that is there in me is i am able to comprehend or i am aware of the time the space and the causality the desh the kal the nimittam what is desh i know that i am seeing it that means i still have the knowledge that i am seeing a subtler energy form full of light i know that i am seeing it now i am aware of the kal and nimitt i know that this is caused by something there is a cause there must be a cause there is a causality there is a nimitt object has vanished energy is in front of me in the form of light a confluence of light mixing with each other bright in nature simultaneously i may get an experience of a smell the smell that i have never smelled earlier or a shape that i have never seen earlier or i am feeling a great taste in my mouth or i'm concentrating and i'm listening or hearing some beautiful divine sound 
I'm not able to compare it with any sound that I know because I am beyond comparison. But yes, I am listening to the sound. All I can say is, it is giving me enormous happiness. It's a different sound. It's a different smell. A different light. A different roop. A different taste. But all are divya, divine experiences. Such a mind or the pradnya, which has gone into the sukshma, no more into the grosser objects, but still able to understand desh, kal, nimitta, meaning being aware of the form the smell that I am smelling now. Now means I am aware of the kal. Here, I am aware of the space. And there must be some reason for it. Nimitta. I am aware of these three aspects. When I enter into sukshma and aware of these three aspects, it is called Savichara Sampradnya Samadhi. You may ask a question why the word vichara? Vichara means bhog. Vichara iti abhogaha. In the Bhashyam it is given that when I enjoy these three aspects, the desh, kal, and the nimitta aspect of the sukshma. It is called bhog. That bhog is called vichar. Yogi, when he is in concentration and enjoying this divya anubhava, this bhog that he gets, the happiness that he gets, describes that when he comes out of that samadhi as I had a beautiful and a very, very divine smell. He is able to recollect it. So it is called vichara. He can recollect it because his memory, even though completely out of the old impressions, was still capable of carrying the new impressions or the smruti, which he recalls when he comes out and describes, I cannot tell you, I was in meditation, it gave me so much of happiness. He is able to describe because he was aware. Because he was aware of Desha Kala Nimitta, it is called Savichar. And in this Samadhi, he is even aware that must be around 10 minutes I was in that state because he's aware of the Kal. And he also says later on that once I was in Siddhbari sitting in front of Guru Deva and I had this Samadhi, so he's able to describe the place, Desha. So Desha, Kal, Nimitta, all the three he's able to recall because it was Savichar Sampratnyat Samadhi. When the yogi further focuses with a great intent, so he first gets into the gross object. Gross object, object has Shabda Artha Jnana. He focuses on that. Then the Shabda goes away. The Jnana goes away. The physical form remains. So he gets into Savitarka to Nirvitarka focuses further and he enters into the micro aspect, subtler aspect or bhuta sukshma aspect of every object. And mind well, Sankhyas have told us that all objects are pancha mahabhautik. So it doesn't matter which object you take in front of you, all objects will lead you to same sukshmata. Now you understand how an idol made up of a clay can take you to the highest possible truth in the, in the world. Because the clay disappears 
and the bhuta sukshma appears so when the yogi goes into bhuta sukshma he sees the energy form of that object which is the bhuta sukshma aspect settler lighter giving the purer aspect pure in energy form and perceived through desha kala nimitta it is savichar but when he focuses further the desha the kal both start slowly dissolving only the nimitta remains because of which the same energy form is seen the same light is seen but now he is not aware of the desh and the kal he doesn't remember where he is sitting the relevance to the place is lost the relevance to the time is lost all he knows is i am sitting and observing the settler aspect of energy the light the beautiful energy aspect all this is new to me never experienced earlier but it is giving me immense pleasure there is happiness all over it's a beautiful feeling i am enjoying bhog is there but only one aspect i am enjoying i will keep enjoying now the reference to the time is lost after some time i come out of it when i come out of it i ask where i am maybe my associate tells me swami ji you were in meditation what time is it it's evening sir oh when did i sit in the morning sir oh i mean i was in meditation for such a long time why what i felt as few moments have become couple of hours because i had lost the relevance and the reference of the time when the relevance and reference of time and the space is lost desh and kal is lost the samadhi is called nirvichar sampradnyat samadhi this aspect of getting from gross to the sukshma stula to the sukshma is difficult but once one masters the art of concentration to move from the gross to the subtle stool to the sukshma then dhyana slowly starts becoming siddha dhyana now dhyanam is known to the yogi and because he enjoys that enormous pleasure now he is not interested in the world now when he comes out and somebody says you are a poor man he doesn't he laughs at it he says i am a rich man because i have direct access to happiness you are trying to find out means to happiness i have direct access to happiness his interest in the surroundings goes down he is no more interested in degree the fame the yasha kirti satta sampatti pratishtha doesn't bother him at all everyone was chanting jai gurudev gurudev ki jai but gurudev was laughing laughing because oh dear ones it doesn't matter to me whether you chant for me or you don't why i am adishtada of the highest concentration where i get immense amount of pleasure and happiness but sir what about the happiness that you derive from the sleep 
the yogi says no 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 that's a very very minuscule and inferior type of happiness and i don't need it anymore so his sleep goes down what about the food the yogi eats morsels he is not a glutton why the interest in food goes is eating only for maintaining the body not that he doesn't enjoy the food but simultaneously he is aware that this enjoyment is absolutely useless compared to the anandam that i get during my meditative states his mind pushes him to again again go back to the meditation and not to be in the sansara or the universe or the world and that is where all the saintly people have described that ab to lagan lagi rama now i am addicted to rama this is the addiction the secret key of that addiction is the concentration on the object so that yogi desperately wants to enter the subtler aspect of the energy form the bhuta sukshma and get into the nirvitarka savitarka nirvitarka savichara nirvichara samadhi and be there in one shot because of ramakrishna paramahamsa's blessings swami vivekananda traverse this path in split second and entered the realm of happiness so much so that he kept on begging to swami ramakrishna paramahamsa swami ji thakur da please put me into samadhi i want to enjoy samadhi after repeated request ramakrishna got annoyed to the extent that he said fee upon you narendra you are asking of your own happiness what about the happiness of this whole world who will give them happiness that is what you are born for your own happiness is always handy to you and now that you are asking so much i am locking it up you shall never have an access to it unless you complete your function in the world your duties in the world that is why ramakrishna paramahamsa used to say with great difficulty i have kept narendra away from this samadhi or else this boy will never come back and if he never comes back the world will be at a loss this is the reason why a yogi again and again tries to bask into the happiness of the samadhi that is the reason why he is always in solitude away from people doesn't want to be with people in fact one can be very sure that anybody who claims to be a saintly person if he wants to be again and again into the people he cannot be an accomplished person an accomplished person finds this world a very very dirty and stale matter he wants to run away from it he is not interested in any kind of relationship with this world that is simply because the yogi has transcended to a state where he wants to stay for a longer period and that is the reason the 43rd mantra says smruti parishuddha swarup shunya iva artha matra nirbhasa nirvitarka it is easier to understand now smruti parishuddha in concentration what we are doing is we are trying to get rid of our memory of our earlier smrutis we have lots of smrutis a wrong impressions about this world a yogi tries to get rid of those smrutis once you clean the slate of memory then you are ready for taking the new impressions which are available at a higher realm mind well in the lower realm of consciousness we interact the, with the world with the help of five senses in the higher realm of consciousness 
we do interact with an object but we do not have sense organs for our help all the sense organs are put together and they are called now pratibha so at the higher realm of consciousness the indriya that is used is pratibha to gain the knowledge in the lower realm sense organs or indriyas are used to get the knowledge the eye sees and the ear hears in the lower realm of consciousness who sees and who hears in the higher realm of consciousness the pratibha pratibha is the indriya used by whom the pragna that means in the lower consciousness buddhi works through the indriyas to understand the world in the higher realm of consciousness pragna works to know the higher world with the help of pratibha this is the process easier to understand the 43rd shloka easier than further to understand the 45th shloka sukshma vishayatvam alinga paryavasana vasanam we are going to come to 45th shloka in the next session but now we know that when yogi tries to concentrate and move forward what he is basically doing is he is trying to get rid of his memories from his mind smriti parishuddha he moves forward by cleansing the memories cleansing the memories means so far whatever you have associated who are you you are nothing but bundle of memories and thoughts we all as individuals are nothing else but the bundle of thoughts means memories when memories are cleansed what happens you are gone as one sufi beautifully puts it khud ko na dekhna hai tujhe dekhne ki shart the condition of seeing you is not to see me meaning none of my memories should prevail when i am concentrating when none of my memories are prevailing i am able to lift myself for higher realm of consciousness where higher truths are revealed what is higher truth and its revelation the subtler energy forms that you see and if you somehow see them because of your punyam moment you see them the first test of the blood is tested by the tiger called yogi now he will be tempted to go back to it again and again his shraddha will be million fold now because there is direct experience pratyaksha anubhava that is why patanjali maharaj insists on everyone saying that please have this experience so that you can move forward and mind well so much of description and the experience that i spoke about is the very lowest minimal aspect of the journey that is described further one of the reason why the saintly people or rishis or the munis or the yogis are not interested in anything is because they see something higher that is how the samadhi of this type helps in developing vairagya they are not interested in day to day things this much of food if at all it comes fine sleep no problem whatever is happening outside doesn't bother why the mind is again and again being contemplated for the higher truths going a higher would mean discarding lawyer and this is precisely what guru deva means when he says detach from lower attach to the higher but mind well detachment is not complete unless you attach so that is why one way is you detach and start going moving towards attaching but moment the attachment is successful detachment is very easy once you experience the nirvitarka 
सवितर्क सविचार एंड निर्विचार वंस वी रीच दिस स्टेज द जॉब इज डन नाउ द डिटैचमेंट विल ऑटोमेटिकली हैपन एंड द अटैचमेंट विल कीप ऑन टेकिंग इट्स रूट स्लोली इट विल ओसिफाई इट विल बिकम हार्डर and then yogi will move keep moving forward till he establishes permanently in the higher abode till now the establishment is not complete because he has reached to that stage and came back that is how he said i did not remember the time that means he came back into the lower realm going from lower realm of consciousness lower world of consciousness to higher world again coming back these are the initial then when you keep moving upwards and reach the final destination which we are going to study then there is no coming back chadte utarte dam ki khabar le phir nahi aana padta kabira chadte utarte dam means not respiration this is chadna utarna going from lower realm of consciousness to the higher realm of consciousness are you ओ पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शांति शांति हरिओम जी संजय जी हरिओम यू नो यू हैड मेंशनड इन द ग्रुप अबाउट you know the experience of uh, uh, now i just want to check uh, normally uh, i think i think krishna murthy uh, is not really you know he's always said uh, his line of thinking has not been the traditional uh, thinking in the sense that he has not given so much uh, relevance to the text and the you know ancient uh, conventional i mean that's my limited understanding and you, you've described his experience also so you know people who have either not studied i'm not presuming that he has not since he doesn't give any relevance to the ancient texts he perhaps may not have uh, been initiated uh, you know in the proper yogi way so how does somebody like that who has not uh, you know gone the traditional way still experience this in the sense that you know a yogi is taught right concentrate and look at a murti and then you move through these various experiences it's a training here yes. uh, he seems to have had access to the same experiences without this route yes why yes. some other uh, so can you just explain that because it happens yes. seems to happen to a lot of people through different routes yes hari om this is this is this is already discussed if you really connect it there he is a videha deva he had done everything in the earlier births so when he came in this life all he needed was a human body because human body is required to get the permanent release so he was a videha deva all the concentration exercises were complete that is how it just dawned upon him that is why i have given that particular clip this is the experience in 1921 in the month of september all of a sudden the pain in the nape of neck also mark well his own words are given there read each word carefully when the pain started in the nape of neck it was directly at the brahmarandra the kundalini was jagrut so what was happening was it was just like removing the thin cover which got removed on that particular time and then he always expressed it as other person what is that other person other person is the real personality 
while g krishnamurti could really realize that this body which is talking is nothing compared to that other person that is why at times is to say the other person is occupying the room occupying the room meaning thereby there was a constant presence felt of the higher self so whatever happened to him happened because of his earlier birth's progress he directly descended on that state are you not aware that raman maharshi had the same thing did he study any of the shastras he got enlightened on his own because this much was left was completed and then he started studying the scriptures raman maharshi is the person a yogi of a highest order who studied the scriptures after the realization of course at that stage nothing remains to understand and that is why j krishna murti whatever he spoke spoke after the experience itself that is why many of his teachings are unorthodox when he says truth is a pathless land it is very difficult for us to understand but what he is trying to say is there is no path you can't do customized way guru ki karni guru jayega chale ki karni chela what it means is so much we have discussed but when we will actually sit for meditation and we'll do our own experience what path are you following your own path is it a path you don't know these are the experience that they will keep coming keep coming till the time the experience itself ends so there are new new paths if at all you call it as a path every teaching of j krishna murti is precisely as per vedanta mode of presentation is different having studied j krishna murti i can confidently say there is nothing different in his teaching other than vedanta the mode of presentation is different when i said just now that in samadhi you see a particular object in a different way not in the traditional way j krishna murti says the same thing when he says there is an art of seeing he says we have never seen a tree as a tree it is so beautiful and for him his vision was like that that is why his every pravachana if you see recorded or written it starts with a description of the some object for example his one of his pravachana would start like this it's a beautiful winter morning outside there is a tree it has beautiful leaves a small squirrel is running up and down on the tree what this has to do with the profound truth that he was revealing in fact he was enjoying the bliss of interacting with the world because he was a walking yogi that's why if one is adept with vedanta and then studies j krishna murti one can collaborate it very fast otherwise it appears to be a different kind of a thinking it is not because truth is one the modality of expressing can vary are you